Why are we so divided in the world of Christendom? Why so many denominations? Why so many contradictory prophecies and conflicting doctrines? What did Yeshua Jesus declare about the vision in the house? It shall not stand. Therefore, God is shaking. We can see this happening around the world. Like in 2018, before the corona thing, I saw the Lord standing in a massive open vision and he towered out into eternity. And he declared the shaking of nations, Joel chapter 3. The vats are overflowing because their wickedness is great. And God said to me, the rebellion of man has pushed to the limits. Now it overflows and it will result in judgment to bring the nations towards repentance. So many fail because of religion and false doctrine to understand that through the new covenant Melchizedek priesthood of Christ declared in Hebrews 7, we have been given new laws and that commandment is to fulfill the law of, the law of Christ, the doctrine of Christ which is the power and nature of the holy love of God. That's why Jesus said love is the fulfillment of the law, because love towards God and neighbor works no ill. Like the Father said to me, the only thing that can satisfy true love is the benefit of others. It's a selfless love. But to be brought into that reality, to the Melchizedek priesthood of Yeshua Jesus, to the doctrine of Christ, which unveils the pattern of Christ, Philippians 2, Philippians 3, and Hebrews 12, declared in and commanded in John chapter 15, a new commandment I give unto you that you love as I have loved, and that's to follow him, not just to the cross and to salvation, and stay and live the rest of our lives in the flesh as spiritual babies in the outer court but to pursue God like a Moses into his mountain Psalm 24 who may ascend into the mountain of God who may stand in the tabernacle of the Holy One he who has clean hands and a pure heart in other words he speaks of the overcoming bride the habitation in which he tabernacles Revelation 3, to those who overcome, I'll write the name of the city of my God. So the bride becomes the habitation. She is called the heavenly Jerusalem. And Jesus appeared in me and opened the realm, realms of glory around me when he declared the revelation of the open door to the faithful church of Philadelphia. He, I said before you, open door. He is that door. Like when John in the Revelations 4 looked up and I saw a door open in heaven and a, door, a voice said, come up here. And that signifies the resurrection of the sons, the man-child. Arise, shine, your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. That links with 2 Corinthians 3, the glory of the new covenant from glory to glory into ever-increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit because he must be unveiled to creation within the glorified bride, the unveiling of the man-child, the birthing of the son of man. Because he's coming through government to take creation back. Love towards God and neighbor works no ill. The law of Christ, the law of love. And the seed must fall into the ground and dies because the born again seed is not born into fruitfulness. It must grow into fruitfulness like any seed, like the principle run within any seed. The seed must die. First Corinthians 15 that speaks of the resurrection. This, it says there what has been sown cannot be brought back to life unless it has died. So the death of the old order of the earthy man, the flesh, 
ushers in the resurrection of the new creation created after God and through righteousness. Because God strips us through the cross, the Colossians to circumcision of the cross of everything of the old self. Like the Lord said to me, well, the Father spoke to me and he said to me, if he speaks common sense, because he speaks to children, he said to me, if you really want to be brought into the glory of a new creation, then first allow me to destroy the old foundations. Because you don't build and erect a new building on a rotten platform. You look six, you dig down and lay a foundation on a rock. He has to empty us out so that he can fill us with himself to raise us up as pillars of truth to those who overcome or make a pillar in my temple. So this administration of divine poured out love through the ministry of the Spirit does not only save the sinner in fallen man, but also slays the sinner and transform the redeemed person into the likeness and image of Christ. This is the doctrine given through the Melchizedek priesthood of Christ, the doctrine of Christ conforming to his pattern and to his likeness, Romans 8, verse 28 to 39. 2 Corinthians 3, the inward transformation, not written on laws, not written the written code, the letter which kills the, the covenant, old covenant of condemnation and death. It's a new covenant with new laws. We become like the lawgiver himself. Romans 6 speaks of this as well. If we died with him, we will also live with him. If we have been conformed to his likeness image, if we have been conformed to his death, So there's a conformity, Romans 8, 28 to 39. He's the firstborn among many brethren, and those whom he foreknew he predestined to be conformed. It's a supernatural transformation that's taking place in the way of the cross. It's the journey of the laid down life, the seed that must fall into the ground and dies, not just to the cross, but through the cross, answering the upward call of Christ. The seed must grow the blade, the stalk, the full kernel in the head until fruitfulness comes forth. Philippians 2 also speaks of this way of the cross. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ. It's the pattern revealed in the doctrine of Christ. We become like him. Philippians 2, in the life of Christ, Philippians 3, demonstrated and wrought out in the life of the Apostle Paul, because he was an apostle to the Gentiles. Then Hebrews 12 speaks of this upward call into Mount Zion, like Yahweh says in Isaiah 57, this is what the high and the lofty one says, he who speaks, he who, he who inhabits eternity, I live and dwell in the high and holy place, but also with him that is of a broken spirit and a humble heart. Then he speaks of the resurrection to revive the spirit of the lonely and the contrite ones. And there's a humbling taking place in the way of the cross. Because those who exalt themselves shall be humbled. Those who hum he gives grace to the humble. Those who humble themselves in obedience to Christ. It takes great humility to obey Christ and to be conformed by the power of God to the likeness and image of his son. It's the journey of the sown seed, born again seed, through the death of self into the resurrection of fruitfulness. The fruits of the spirit. The life of Christ wrought out in the life and journey of the born again seed. That's the doctrine of the Melchizedek priesthood. The law of Christ become love because love is fruitfulness. It's Christ-likeness. It's a fruit of the Spirit. There's a brother, Christopher M. Hall, that had a spiritual encounter while in prayer. He was in conversation with the head of the church, Yeshua, Jesus. And he asked the Lord, why are we so divided? What must I do to be holy? And the Lord answered, My child, I will tell you 
why you are all so divided. It is your religions. And it must be noted and, know, and, and understood that a relig religion affects all of us. The spirits of false religion comes in to the mental ascent of man. Like Jesus rebuked Satan and his own disciple in the, when he declared the principle of how he builds his kingdom into us. Because we are his resting place, our hearts. Isaiah 66, where's the house that you would build for me? Where's the place of my rest? God doesn't live in external temples built by men. We are his living temple of living stones fitted together into a spiritual house and habitation of God. And so religious spirits affect us through, like the Lord said to, to Peter in Matthew 6, and get behind me, Satan, you don't have in mind, you don't mind the things of God, but the things of man. It's all this intellectualism and human opinion, like the Pharisees. They thought they had God all worked out, but when he stood right in front of them, they didn't recognize him. And the same with many religious people today. They will not recognize Christ because they have formulated their own doctrines and opinions of men, contrary to the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Declared in Matthew 16, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, that I am the Christ, the living stone, the foundation stone of my house, and the principle by which God builds revelation knowledge. Not through human opinion and human intellectualism. You can't figure God out. It says in 1 Corinthians 2 that the natural mind is in enmity, uh, Romans 8, the natural mind is in enmity with God. And in 1 Corinthians 2, the nat to the natural mind, the things of the spirit is foolishness. So the renewing of the mind and the unveiling of God comes through the revelation of the spirit. He who knows the mind of God, the spirit of God. Man knows nothing within himself. That's why there's so much division, because of our religions. Man formed regulations. The Lord said, these are not of me. Each of you has a list, a list of do's and don'ts. And each of you think that I authored your perspective or your, each of you think I authored your respective lists. Baptists have their list. Catholics have their lists, Pentecostals have their lists, Methodists have their list, Lutherans have their list, Charismatics have their list, Messianics have their list, Epic Episcopals, Ep <laughs> how do you pronounce this, Jesus? Episcopals, whatever, have their list, sorry for that one. Each list is different. I am not a God of confusion. Each list is a doctrine of man. Some say you must keep the Ten Commandments that I delivered to Moses to give to my people. Some of you expand upon these and add feast days, Sabbaths, dietary regulations, linguistic nuances of eccentricity when you think you are shown to be wise, yet you are looking foolish in your conceits. You want to be so much like my people, the Jews, but not like me. And anything we replace Christ with becomes an idol. God says you fail to realize I am the eternal, the constant, the source, the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the ending, and the all in all, the great I am that I am. I'm not Catholic, Protestant, or evangelical, neither am I Jewish. I'm God. Still some of you have codified my teachings into a strict body of church law in which you seek to please me by changing your behavior but not your being. You see, and this is the doctrine of Christ. It's the inward transformation of grace, not religious outward performance. Flesh can't impress God. It must be crucified. In the order of Christ. And following him not just to the cross but through the cross. 
answering the upward call of God in Christ unto mature sonship, Christ-likeness. God says, teachings of mine were for spiritual development. They were not intended to be turned into dry do's and don'ts to maintain a religious status quo. Then some of you codified the methods with which I addressed issues in Israel or the first generation of churches, making them commandments instead of seeing the spirit behind the reasoning. It is why it says the old covenant is a reflection of Christ. It, just, it was a shadow. Jesus is the fulfillment. This reality would become like him. The law was given to expose the sinful condition before man. The law could not change us. Romans 8 verse 2 and 3. The inward transformation of grace and the Melchizedek priesthood of Christ. New laws, new commandment, new priesthood. We become like Jesus through a spiritual transformation work wrought into us by the Spirit of God. It brings us into the life, not the letter that kills Ministry of Guilt and Condemnation. God says a reasoning that endures in any context, be it time or culture, then you added historical traditions established by various religious leaders and founders. You codify congregation structures, financial models, added lit liturgies, added dietary, dietary regulations, added special days of worship, added dress codes, even added prohibitions on both men and women. I never require it. Each of you has these lists, and it's all different religion denominations that divides us. God says, stop trying to please me by living these man-made lists. They divide you because you measure yourselves against one another based on your respective man-made lists, which are all false religion. Christ is the standard. We become like Him. He transforms us into His likeness. It's not external, fleshly, shallow, dead religious performance-based religion. It's the inward transformation of grace. We're not in performance, we're undergoing graceful transformation. The same grace which saves us must also be allowed to change us. This is why he says in Philippians 2, 12 and 13, it is God who works in us to do and to will. It is God who works in us to do and to will. He works change. He's the potter with the clay. God says, ask the Pharisees to list exactly what must be done to please me. Let them present his list. And suddenly you'll see another Pharisee argue against something on the first Pharisee's list or seek to add something from the list to it. It's that Pharisee spirit of false religion, legalism, performance. Like Jesus said, you are like whitewashed tombs full of dead bones. Eventually, they are all squabbling over which commandments on which list has to be obeyed and which do not, like chickens chasing worms in a barnyard of man-made religious activity. Why? It is because the spirit of legalism leaves you awash in the sea of subjective personal interpretation, wherein one man's interpretation is just as good as another's. And Jesus is the revelation of the new covenant. We become like him. Simple. Boom. Christ-likeness. 1 Timothy 6. The doctrine which accords with godliness, godlikeness, Christ-likeness. Conform to his pattern, likeness, and image. Not the law of do's and don'ts. The letter kills. The spirit brings life. God says, yet you cling to them because you think they make you holy. These lists don't make you holy. What makes you holy is me. You see, I am the vine, John 15, and you are the branches. You are called to be living extensions of me. 
not living extensions of the ancient nation of Israel, your given church or your given denomination. Because those become idols. You are called to be conformed into the image and likeness of Christ, not the image and likeness of your respective church movement or denomination. When you live by their lists, you are becoming like them, not like me. In other words, church clones. It's demonic. You see, and this is where that Jezebelic spirit of legalism and the python spirit, the religious haughty spirit, that straight, he's a restrainer of the life of the spirit. And Leviathan, the king over the children of pride, the twister that twists and perverts everything. Isaiah 27. So Jesus says, And so you ask, how do I become like you? I, the Lord, shall answer you this day. You as an ear, let him hear. The answer is in the very nature of my being, of my being my beloved. The answer is in the very nature of being my beloved. You see, I am love. When you are loving, gracious, forgiving, kind, compassionate, patient, long-suffering, temperate, and giving, you are being like me. See, that's the fruit of Christ-likeness. Do you wish to fulfill the law? Don't live by its letter. Find its core. Find its essence. Find my reason for delivering said laws in their given contexts. Find its spirit and intent. You'll discover that it's because I was teaching many different things. But the core was and always has been my love. Love me, my child. Love me with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And demonstrate your love for me by loving others as yourself. If you do this, you will have fulfilled the essence of my law. In other words, righteousness is what God says, what comes forth from his lips. The declared standard, the left out standard by the Spirit. If there is any other commandment ever brought to your attention, know this, it is fulfilled in this single statement. Love thy neighbor as thyself. In this you do no wrong. And in loving you become like me, the one who is love itself. So be not swayed by their lists. Do not be deceived by their vain and eccentric verbiage. Do not emulate a nation, a denomination or a church. Instead emulate me and you will find rest for your souls. Love me with all your being and show me that you love me by loving others as yourself. The only commandment I give you is love. For love will not murder, steal, covet, slander, commit adultery, rage, revenge or blaspheme. Love will set every day aside as holy. Because he is the Sabbath rest. He's the fulfillment of the Sabbath. The principle of the Sabbath is fulfilled in Christ. Love will set every day aside as holy because we're not allowed to do what we want because Christ is in our lives now. We are not our own. We were bought at a price because love seeks to give absolute devotion every single day without end. I'm not impressed with your lists, says God. First, your lists all differ. And second, you don't even keep your own list perfectly. This makes you hypocrites of the worst kind. Why do you do this to yourselves? Do you really think I'm impressed by anything you do? I'm impressed by any... Am I impressed by any cherry-picked list of commandments you've chosen to embrace at the expense of others that you chose not to? Do you really think I'm going to open the books and judge you by each of your respective lists? Will I judge according to dress code, hairstyles, feast days, and your labored mispronunciations of an ancient language? 
Will I praise you for acting Jewish, even though if the truth were to be told, you don't, you don't have a single drop of Hebrew blood in your body? No, when you stand before me, I will only seek to know two things, that you love me with all your being. Did you seek to show love for me by loving others as yourself? Because love is the fulfillment of the law. Love is the fulfillment of obedience. Like Jesus said in John 16, if you love me, do what I say. And you then begin to see how your lusts hindered you from loving your neighbors. You will see how your lusts, adulteries, thievery, slander, etc. Are not, are not rooted in failing to obey a rule on a list, but in your failing to love. For love does not harm to the object of its affection. Love does no harm to the object of its affection. Like the Father said, the only thing that can satisfy true love is the benefit of others. So I leave you with this, become like me, be conformed into the very image and likeness of Jesus Christ, my beloved son, and this is you, and in this you, fulfill, you will fulfill true holiness, because holiness is Christ's likeness. In this you will find the law of liberty, the law of love, you will have discovered me, 